Today I'm going to use my Rapiconda tire changer for the first time to change a tire. I'm going to do the Honda Goldwing rear wheel, which is arguably the hardest wheel to a motorcycle wheel to change tires for. Um, I've got a Bridgestone tire on it. I'm going to replace it with another Bridgestone tire. Normally I will warm these tires up in the sun before I change them. I don't have that opportunity today, so I'm going to do the tires cold, which will make it even more of a challenge. So we're going to give this tire changer a workout and uh, let's see how it performs. So the first thing I need to do is break the bead on this tire. I've already got all the air out of it. I'm going to mount it on the changer. Notice these rubber blocks. These blocks have little magnets on the back of them so they just stick wherever you put them. So you need to position those so that the, the rim and the wheel rest on those blocks. So you may have to slide those blocks you know up or down to get them where you want them. And then you take this little stepped collar and you insert that to kind of hold the rim. So one comment, most tire changers I've used will support the wheel in three locations. This only supports it in two. So because of that, that's why you need this collar to kind of lock the position of the rim in place so it won't move around. So once you have that in place, you adjust the height here of your uh, bead breaker tool. And I like to set it so the bead breaker is pretty close to the rim. That gives me the most leverage. So I've turned the tire changer to this side to kind of give you a little better view. Now this tire has a TPMS sensor on it and the valve stems down here at the bottom. I do have to be careful about where I break the bead on the tire. You don't want to put the bead breaker tool where the valve stem is because you don't want to break that sensor. So okay, here we go. I'm going to start pushing down on this tire. And you can see it's taken almost all of my body weight. There. So I got the first bead broken. Now I can just start rotating the tire and continue breaking the bead all the way around the circumference of the tire. Okay, so there's the first side bead broken. I'm going to turn the wheel over. Put my locking collar back in and I'm going to break the other side. So there's both sides of the bead broken, and that was pretty easy. Being able to simply rotate the, the wheel and then put the bead breaker back in position makes it easy to break the bead all the way around. So uh, that went pretty smooth. Did take a lot of force, but it went pretty smooth. Here's a close-up look at this installation and removal tool. They call this the duck head for obvious reasons. Uh, it's, it's a metal head that's covered with plastic coating. And that's what fits into your rim and clamps onto your rim and guides the tire on. And it has a ratcheting mechanism built into it so that you can ratchet this around and use the tool, which enables you to stand in the, a nice position for leverage and let the tool move around and you stay in the same place. So, 
So that's the installation tool. So to get started, since this wheel does have a tire pressure uh, sensor in it, we're going to make sure the valve stem is at the 9 o'clock position for removal. Um, this duck head, you'll also notice, has a little screw on it here that allows you to adjust the height of the duck head. So we're going to set this on and get the height adjusted and get this duck head underneath the tire to start the removal process. So I'm just going to set this on here and it just guides right over the post. And I'm going to use the deep breaker tool to push down on, you may have to adjust the height of this a little bit, to push down on the tire so I can get this uh, duck head guided underneath the rim. And so there's what that looks like with the duck head in place. And then I'll just tighten down this adjuster knob and that locks the duck head onto the rim. So now to get started I'm going to rotate the entire wheel down so the duck head is at the 6 o'clock position. My tire pressure valve is now at the 3 o'clock position and I'll start the uh, removal process. So in order to keep the rim from rotating, you install this heavy gauge pin into the hole in the tire changer. And that blocks the rim from being able to rotate when the spoke hits that, uh, hits that stop. It's not able to rotate. So that's the first piece you have to get in place. So they give you some of this bead grease and a little brush and so you want to uh, kind of get some grease on this duck head so that it can slide smoothly around the tire. They also tell you to use a little soap and water and a spray bottle around the edge of the tire to help it slide. Um, personally I like to use a little silicone spray because um, it's, it's easy on the rubber and it uh, slides real nice. Now we need to take the hooked end of this tire tool and we're going to hook it over the edge of the bead underneath the duck head and we're going to use that to pry uh, the, the bead over the duck head. So I'm just going to slip this tool in and it's going to take a little pressure. You have to kind of force it in and get it over the bead. And now once you have it over the bead, you can take the bead breaker tool and sort of push in on the top of the tire. This forces the tire down into the drop center of the rim so that the tire can pull in this direction against the rim. And then you can pry on the bottom and you'll see that tire start to come up over that duck head. Then when you get the tire over the duck head, you'll see they provide you with a nice little hook there that you can hook the tire tool in and it will hold the tire tool in place. So now with the tire tool held in place and the, the upper portion of the tire pushed down into the drop center, I can remove the bead breaker tool and I can move this ratcheting arm around and the bead breaker tool now becomes my lever for removing the, the tire from the rim. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stand on the right hand side and I can put my foot on the, on the base of the uh, tire stand to kind of help hold it. Put a hand here to kind of help hold it. And I can use my body weight here and I don't have to move around in a circle, I just use the ratchet mechanism. So I'm going to start going around the tire. So here we go. Now you heard, heard the, the uh, tire tool just popped off of the duck head, but it's still in place. And I'm just going around the circumference of the tire. Taking a little force, but it's not too bad. 
And there's the first bead removed. So that was fairly easy. So to remove the second bead, we're just going to rotate this head back down to the 6 o'clock position. And I'm going to lift the tire up so that it gets over that tire pressure sensor. So there's the tire pressure sensor at the 3 o'clock position on the wheel. And what I'm trying to do is to make sure that the tire is up over the tire pressure sensor. And that the bead, because if the bead is, is down here, the bead will hang up on that tire pressure sensor and it will break it. So you want to make sure that tire pressure sensor is free of the bead when we start. So again, I'm going to take my tool, tire tool, with the curved end. And I'm going to get the curved end under the second bead. And then I'm going to lift the tire up. And this is a little bit of a trick. You got to kind of pull up on the tire and get that edge of the tire over the duck head and lock that tool on its little clip. And then we need to go back and recheck that tire sensor. So there's the tire pressure sensor and it's free and on the outboard side of that bead so I'm good to go. Now I'm just going to rotate this ratchet around and I'm going to take my silicone spray or tire lube or soapy water whatever you decide to use and I'm going to make sure that that's all lubed up real good and I'm going to start the removal process of the second bead so here we go And this is taking a little bit of force here to remove this second bead. I'll let you look down in here and see how this is working. And I'm having to use a lot of my body weight to get that second bead off, but it's coming. And once you get about 30-40% of it, see there, it's already done. It's off now. So there's the tire removed from the rim. So now I can just pull the tire off and get ready to put the new one on. So I'm going to take some of this tire gel goo and I'm going to put it all around the circumference of the bead on both beads before I start. You don't need a whole lot, but you need enough that that duck head is going to slide nicely on the bottom edge. Really that bottom edge is the main part where you need it. It's also a good idea to put plenty of grease on the duck head itself. Now with the duck head at the 12 o'clock position, my tire pressure sensor is still at the three o'clock position, I'm going to set the tire in place and I'm going to make sure I've got the rotation arrow on the tire pointing in the right direction. Now you're going to set the tire on this duck head in a diagonal fashion and you're going to sort of push down on that tire a little bit. And now with the, with the duck head over the tire, we're going to start walking the installation tool around in a circle until the tire drops in place and the first bead's pretty easy. So now before we do the second bead we want to make sure that the tire pressure sensor now is on the inboard side of that tire bead so your tire pressure sensor is right there but you cannot see it. So we want the, the uh, bead of the tire over the tire pressure sensor for installation. 
We also want to make sure if we have a yellow dot on the tire that the yellow dot is lined up with the valve stem uh, for balancing for where we want it to be. So make sure you got your tire lined up properly. Starting once again at the 12 o'clock position, we're going to get the top edge of the tire so that the duck head is showing but his tail is underneath the uh, bead and you can use the bead breaker to kind of push down on the tire where you need to to get it where you want it. Then we're going to take one of these uh, tire block tools and I'm going to use this to keep the tire from running on the rim as we install it. So the tire block tool, I'm just going to kind of push down on here and I'm going to insert that tool right there. And what that's going to do is that's going to hold that bead from trying to come off as I'm mounting the other side on. So now with the installation duck head in place, I'm just going to repeat the process. And I'm going to start going around in a circle and getting the second bead on. And you have to watch this duck head that it doesn't pop out of place as you're going along. Now let me show you something. You see how this bead is pulling into the drop center all the way around? That's what you want. That allows the tire to pull as close to the rim as it can. And so a little trick I've developed with these Goldwing tires is I've just cut some wooden blocks. And I put some little wooden blocks in here to help hold that, that bead from popping out of the drop center. Because as you go around the tire, that's going to try to pop out. So I've got my blocks in place. I'm just going to keep going around and I'm going to go very slowly. I'm not going to try to do this fast. And there's a couple reasons for that. So now I'm going to insert another of my wood blocks here. And as I go around, I'm going to keep installing wood blocks behind the head of that duck. And I'm going to pause at this point because the bead is starting to get tight here. This allows me to do a couple of things. It allows me to re-grease that area where some of my tire lube may have come off. So I can put some more tire lube right there where the duck head's going to ride. I can also, by pausing, I can allow this bead to stretch and relax a little bit. And this is a, a trick to do with these Goldwing tires is as you feel them start to get really tight and hard to mount, just take a breath and wait about 20-30 seconds. Let that bead get tight and that bead will actually relax under the pressure and then it will allow you to continue on. So that's another reason for going slowly. You take small bites. So I'm continuing around in a circle. And this is where I'm having to use a lot of force on this, on this tool. I want to back up and show you. So I want to give you an idea how much leverage I'm having to put into this tool at this point. I'm really having to put my body weight in it to get this last 20 or 30 percent of the bead on. And I'm continuing to just go slowly. I'm checking that the drop center is pushed down as far as it will go all the way around with my wood blocks. And so you can see here that I'm, you know, I'm 70, 60% of the way there. So this last little bit is where it gets tough, where you gotta really put some force into it. And there it goes, tires on. So really that wasn't bad. Um, these, these gold wing tires are hard to mount on any tire machine. Um, I'd have to say this was actually quite a bit easier than the way I've been doing it on my old 
Harbor Freight tool, so this is definitely a nice upgrade. And yes, it will do a Goldwing tire. So there you have it. Now to get this uh, stopper tool out that I put in, the easiest way to do it is to just use your bead breaker tool, push down on it enough that you get the clearance you need and then you can yank that thing out. The same with my wooden blocks, you know, and this duck head too, we have to get out. So we've got to rotate the, got to pull the pin out of the bottom so I can rotate the wheel here. And I can take the pressure off that duck head and now I can pull that duck head out. And then I can go around so I can get the wheel to rotate here for me. And I can pull out all these little wooden blocks that I put in. And so now with uh, the tire done, I can simply strip down the tool which literally just takes a minute or two to do. Conda tire changer.